the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, etc. And it continues. You find that in Galatians 5.22. But what happens when that opposes what we see as reality? There is no joy. There is no love. There is no peace. Sometimes we may so good but find that all is not good. The Bible talks about this. Go to Matthew 13, 24 to 30. This is Jesus speaking. And he's speaking about a parable. See, there's another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop then the tares also appeared so the servants of the owner came and said to him sir did you know did you not sow good seed into your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow until the harvest and at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them and gather the wheat onto, into my barn sometimes we may find God seemingly inactive when we see injustice. Especially in the things we see. The day we were, yesterday I was reading about how a person was cruel to his dog and because of the cruelty uh, and he finally abandoned the dog, the dog kept on biting his tail viciously because of that cruelty. From there to our personal injustice, to the injustice we see across the nations. Where is God in all of this? I don't know about you, but I've asked myself that. In these verses that I just read, Jesus describes our lives reality God has created a world of goodness no doubt about that but humankind fell and has allowed sin to enter into that beautiful world and produces and it produced bad things weeds that grew up alongside the good things, the wheat. There are many explanations to this parable, but Jesus tells us that bad things will sur surround us naturally because he has decided to allow them to grow alongside the good things. He has allowed that. What is the reason for this? Earlier in my ministry, I was trying to pull out the weeds. Whenever I saw weed, ah, that's what you do in the garden, yeah? But in the ministry, I was thinking, ah, this is, this is how it should be. After all, the Apostle Paul 
gave someone over to Satan, yeah? All that is there. All that is good. But it says very clearly the reason that if we try to pull out the weeds ourselves, we will damage and destroy the weed that is planted. Do you understand? I'll say that again. If we try to pull out the weeds ourselves, we will damage and destroy the wheat he's planted. Yes? Instead of focusing on the weeds, Jesus says, trust him to separate the ugly from the beautiful and to save the beautiful for us. There will come a judgment. Hallelujah. And we will be vindicated. As we live also, yes? But we cannot escape a world that produces bad things in our life. But we can trust God by faith to protect the beauty He's planted in our lives. He gives us what for ashes? Beauty for ashes. Even though they're ashes, they're different. Ashes means what? They change. The formula is different. But God is able to bring beauty back. He's planted us by rivers of water. And He's planted that beauty to nourish us with it. There will come a time of judgment, for judgment. There will come a time of God's wrath. So despite bad things happening to good people, we will continue to grow spiritually to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, to bear the fruit in our life. And it starts with holiness. Holiness means you're set apart for the living God who is the source of all life. Abundant life. Amen. Go to Ecclesiastes 3.11. It says he has made everything beautiful in its time. And also he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find the work that God does from the beginning to end. The second sentence I've explained many years ago is actually quite deep. But in his time he will make everything beautiful. Do you understand? I explained earlier in Ecclesiastes 5.20 that he'll keep you busy with the joy of your heart as you trust in him. Do you understand? So what are the things that are th taking away your faith right now? Jesus had come to him like a little child. So spend this moment casting that to him. Be honest with him. When the father with the son, the epileptic son, came and said, I want to believe, but I don't want. I don't know whether I should believe or what I should believe and how I should believe. The pastor says I should believe, but uh, I stubbed my toe the other day and it's a blessing something else came out of my mouth. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you. Nice people, yes? So what do I believe? What's in my heart comes out of my mouth? <gasps> Abigail? Do you understand? Let God bring to completion the good work He has started in us. Somebody I know used to throw glass across the road when he gets angry, yes? At a moving truck. I don't, I'm not going to say whom, but do you understand? But I think the Lord has worked in his life. Yes? Earlier, this person, when I used to go to Uti, used to manage till the shoe toll. Why? Till that time, he used to tolerate 
all the people jumping in front of him testing his brakes people jumping without signal all these things i told him expect this expect that goat to jump in front of you and say ba because in god language goat language is saying how are your brakes yes interpretation of of goat goat language yes so if you expect that and then you drive you will make it to your destination otherwise you will sit and fight and throw glasses as soon as i said this a person switch lanes without indicating where he wanted to go another person indicated that he wanted to go this way but he went that way expect that in your life and let the lord guide you he'll teach you to profit and lead you by the way you should go it has to be real the faith has to be real it cannot be in the book the logos has to become rema no pun intended her daughter's name is rema yeah so do you understand it has to become living that is why we serve a living god he is alive so set your heart right with him take this time because the living god has given us a holy communion to partake of his body and his blood as we partake of it remember there is no condemnation set your heart right with him take this time we're going to talk or continue our talk on our study on the fruit of the spirit how the holy spirit is lord and how we are sealed with the holy spirit we are the temple of the holy spirit holy ghost yes remember david strengthened himself with what with coffee huh with the lord yes in his lord in the lord his god yes do you understand his faith was real to him is your faith real to you this is what matters in the end otherwise it just becomes somebody else's faith or you are attending a church and what does it do to you really Let's go to Galatians 5:22 to 23. It says, "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law." The first of the three things that are mentioned the fruit is love joy and peace yes they're prominent throughout the bible as qualities of life that god has designed for us to understand we don't experience that because of the fall but the fruit the first position of love at the head of the list suggests that all other virtues somehow flow from love it is only natural that our new life in god is characterized by love since god himself is love yes if you don't have love you're nothing but a what clanging symbol to understand Let's go to 1 John 4:7. Beloved, 
Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So, what is of God? Love is of God, yes? John 4, 7, yes? Go to 4, 12. 1 John 4, 12. It says, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. Yes? Let's go to 1 John 4, 16. And we have known and believed that the love of God that God has for us. God is love, yes? And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. He who abides in what? Love abides in God and God in him. What is this love? We need to study that, yes? Because you and me, we want to abide in God, yes? And he says, if you abide in love, we abide in God, yes? Moreover, if you go earlier, 1 John 3, 14, it says, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. So, if you don't love your brother, you abide in what? Death. So you have a choice of abiding with God or abiding in death. All that depends on love, yes? This love is not the love that the world offers. It's not the love of the world's songs or the poetry or literature. It's not a natural love, yeah? That cares for those who are dear to us and usually treat us as we would like to be treated. Usually. Yes? It is a radical, unlimited, unconditional love of Christ who willingly gave up his glory, power, honor, and finally his very life. Not just for his friends, but also for his enemies. It is a perfect love that existed between the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit in eternity that has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yes? Do, do you understand? Go to Romans 5.5. 5. Now, hope does not disappoint it because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Hope does not disappoint. Why? Because of the love of God, which has been poured out in our hearts. So if you don't have the love of God, do you have hope? See, when I talk about hope, it's not just me talking nonsense or me preaching. Do you want to say it is real to me? Yes? This love has to be real. So, let's go move on to joy. Remember the fruit of the Spirit. There's love and then there's joy. Yes, joy is another prominent trait of our life in God. It has to be real. Yes, joy. Remember I spoke about it last week. Joy is not an ice cream. It's a distinguishing atmosphere of the Christian's life. It what sets you apart. Do you understand? Do you have joy in your life? What is the reason for that joy? Because you have hope. Why do you have hope? Because hope doesn't disappoint. Because of what? Love. Do you understand? So, whatever be the ingredients of the Christian life, and in whatever portions they are mixed together joy is one of them do you understand like love joy is of the Lord the joy of the Lord is my strength yes the joy of our new life is joy in the Lord that is the spiritual life yeah go to Philippians 4 4 
says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Paul was writing this in jail. And he was telling the church in Philippi to rejoice. When I first read it, I thought he was crazy. Some people joined the laughing club and they just laugh for no, re no reason. You can watch that on TV. They go, ha, 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 and then start laughing. But that is not the real joy, yeah? It, it is Christ's joy which he said to his disciples, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you. It's a tangible thing. That your joy may be made full. It's a tangible thing. To have that joy. Go to John 15, 11. It says, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you, that your joy may be full. Yes? Um, Rebbe, did you have ice cream this morning? No. How? How do you know? Okay, because it was real, no? Just like the ice cream is real, whether it be called Joy or Arun or Anu, yes? These are all ice creams, yeah? Yeah. The un uh, Uncle John also. <laughs> No comment, yeah? <laughs> There's a pizza called Papa John's, yeah? That's better than ice cream, yeah? But it's real, no? Jerry, this is not real, yes? Just like that, the joy of the Lord is real. It's tangible. It surpasses all understanding. In fact, sometimes you think you're crazy because you have joy. You shouldn't be happy, but you are happy. You're joyful in the Lord. The Lord gives you that joy. Yes, this is what I wanted to say before. Remember, John the Apostle said he can only give what he's received. You can only give what you've received. You can give me a cell phone. Why? Because you have a cell phone. But if I ask you for a helicopter, can you give me one? Not unless you have one. Do you understand? So have you received this tangible gift from God? As you abide in God, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you understand? Yes? This is not a joy that depends on something in the world. The world, its presence, world system is passing away and can never be permanent. Go to 1 John 2.17. Says, and the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So this world is passing away. So it, if it gives you joy, it's temporary. I got lots of joy when I got the new phone. But it's been a year and a half since I got it. I still have joy that I have a phone, but it's not the same joy that I got when I got the new phone. Do you do understand? Yes? Do you understand? But the what the Lord has given me is joyful. It goes from strength unto strength. Do, do you understand? Yes? This joy is not based on our circumstances. A poor person can be joyful. A rich person can be joyful. It's not based on the money you have. When I came out of the hospital, I was joyful. I thought I was crazy, but I was joyful. I was wondering, why am I joyful? What is there to be joyful about? That's the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. Amen? This is our hope. This is our joy. Remember Paul in jail? If you read the book of Philippians, even though Paul was writing from prison, joy is a dominant theme in his letter to the Philippines. In chapter 1, there is what? Joy in suffering. In chapter 2, there is joy in serving. In chapter 3, there is joy in believing, yes? 
in chapter 4 there's joy in giving you try writing that while you're in jail unless you're filled with the holy spirit it won't be real and people know it's fake will know it's fake do you understand so the secret of this joy is grounded in his relationship with jesus christ the secret of your joy is grounded in your relationship with jesus christ do you understand that's why i tell you to sharpen your axe people today desperately want to be happy but are tossed and turned by daily successes failures and inconveniences success is why because i to- i've told many of you don't forget god when he makes you rich do you understand that is one test a test of praise then there are failures remember failure is not you it's an event yes there are inconveniences but go to god he will tell you what to do with them yes christians are to be joyful in every circumstances even when things are going badly even when we feel like complaining even when no one else is joyful hallelujah we are a peculiar people hallelujah we will be joyful no matter what remember david said he will be more undignified than this do you understand Christ Jesus still reigns we still know him he is our faithful friend so we rejoice at all times yes yesterday i forwarded uh, um a, a parable or no, a story made by ray comfort he speaks about two people who board an airplane and both of these people are given parachutes one is told the reason why he's given a parachute he said when the plane reaches certain height he'll listen to create and you will have you'll have to jump out and this parachute will save you so he is grateful for this parachute and he keeps it the other person is not told why he's got this parachute he puts it on because their air hostess gave it to him and the other people are making fun of him why are you wearing this parachute what's wrong with you do you understand so now this air hostess is new she's serving coffee hot coffee and she spills it on both of them the guy who is not been told why he is putting on the parachute he gets burned and he throws away with the parachute and it be a long time before someone puts that parachute back on him again because one people are laughing at him two he's got hot coffee the other person had the same coffee spilled on him but he's glad okay i'm going to get off this one way or the other and so he clings on to his parachute the example of the coffee is cut off yes from what i told you yesterday but this is the story yes same thing with the gospel it's like a parachute eventually there will be a judgment and only jesus christ will save you from that he died on the cross fulfilling all the obligations of the law and what he reconciled us to god and he gave us what grace and grace is not a license to fall but is a license to get up when we fall do you understand what i'm saying yes so christians are to be joyful this is our strength sin cannot touch us he has lost his power over us yes Tr- the troubles and sorrows of this world cannot extinguish this joy the helmet of salvation 
the breastplate blade of righteousness this is a joy this must be real and it is tangible just like rabbi did not have ice cream no you sure no why because it's tangible yeah you would know if you had no do you understand it has to be tangible it has to be real it's not something preached about and aloof and found only in the bible and what not nonsense it has to be real your faith has to be real in psalm 51 says what you desire truth in the inward being yeah to understand it has to be real don't fake it now we come to peace perhaps the most comprehensive description of our experience of god's kind of life is the fruit of peace do you understand the peace that surpasses all understanding there may be a storm around you but you have peace you're perfectly gathered together the association of peace with spiritual life is apparent in paul's words go to romans 8:6 says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so your spiritual life must have what peace do you understand to be spiritually minded is life and peace so if you want life if you want peace do you do you understand be spiritually minded what does that mean in your mind set on christ by whom who helps you find christ the holy spirit that is spiritually minded to us and christ reconcile you to our father in heaven yes why am i saying it this way peace is often found as the equivalent of salvation Jesus Christ is after all the prince of peace. Go to Isaiah 9:6. Says for unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given. And the govern, government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. This is talking about Jesus the Christ. Yes, go to Acts 10:36. The word which God sent to is to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So when you preach Jesus, you're preaching peace. If there's a storm in your life, Jesus will calm that storm. and after that he will give you the authority to calm every storm in your life hallelujah the gospel of a saving work is a gospel of peace go to ephesians 6:15 having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace so the gospel the good news is of what peace yes you're on 6:15 go to Ephesians 2:17 and he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near so whether you were near or afar there was a separation and you were reconciled to God there was peace in you and God and therefore God is no longer angry with you You're not a sinner in the hands of an angry God if you're born again and a believer in Jesus Christ. The peace of the Bible is more than the absence of turmoil or hostilities. The fundamental meaning of the word for peace is shalom, yes? It denotes complete wholeness and harmony. I always say it's nothing missing 
nothing broken do you understand it has the idea of unimpaired relationship with others and fulfillment in one's undertaking if you set out to do something you will finish it because god is with you amen and god guides you do you understand this the peace produced by the spirit may be summed up of as everything that makes for the person's highest good and promotes the best relationship love is about relationship peace is about relationship do you understand we need to get that through our head do you understand it's not about uh, uh, while it's about other things but if you or relationships are not at peace then we need to have christ in our in our life yes do you understand in the old Te- testament go to number 6 24 to 26 it says the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace so pay, praying for peace in the old testament it's a priestly blessing asking for the sum total of everything that is good with god asking for that to rest upon us people do you understand we all know this peace we know when it's missing and we long for it we know it's a thing the way things ought to be we know when there's peace everything is all right as a sick person knows the feeling of health and longs for its return every human being in the depth of his heart or her heart longs for this peace you want to stand and this peace can only be had with Jesus Christ it is a peace of life for which we were created to experience do you want to stand if you have this peace wherever you are planted you will prosper so so to summarize today's teaching The focus of the gospel of Jesus Christ should be on personal holiness. Not just on the benefits which includes prosperity, yes, but it's just part of that. Do you understand? Not just on the suffering for which he has given us the promised victory. Some people focused on the prosperity some people focus on this is suffering no it is you have to understand what the gospel is it's a good news yes do you understand holiness is being set apart for our heavenly father who's the source of all life instead of focusing on the weeds trust jesus to pull out the weeds yes in sort of damaging and destroying the wheat is planted in other words don't thump people on the head with the bible let not that you which you know be a detriment to others who follow christ just because they are not doing things your way if they are wrong scripturally speak to them with what with love to understand correct them but don't hit them on the head am i clear yes so this cannot be done without the holy spirit because without the holy spirit all you will have is knowledge and intelligence and how the competition not completion yes fruits such as love joy and peace are the qualities of life that god intended remember i'm summarizing all of this 
The love is not the love that the world offers. The joy is not based on our circumstances. The peace, the shalom of God is produced by the Holy Spirit. And that is nothing missing, nothing broken. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit leads us to Jesus Christ. Go to John 16, verse 13 to 15. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is of take off what is mine and declare it to you. And all things that are that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Yes? Now in verse thirteen the word authority is it italicized? Yes? So that means the translators put it there. Yes? So he will not speak on his own. Who is he? The Holy Spirit. Yes? So he will lead you to Christ. To to understand. The authority is there to make us understand it better. Yes? It's not right or wrong or anything like that. But uh, what I want you to understand is that he will lead you. The Holy Spirit will lead you to Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we have the fullness of life. Do you understand? So without the Holy Spirit, who leads us to Christ, who gives us the fullness of life, we cannot have the fullness of life, yes? This is the main characteristics of the gospel. Go to Romans 2.11. It says, for there is no partiality with God, yes? So, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who I am. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? Is that clear? There is no partiality with God. Like that person said, I cannot hear God because God is special and chosen me. No, there's no partiality with us. Why can I hear God? Because I have decided to follow Jesus. And to tune him in. I have taken that time and effort to follow him. To understand. Sometimes I don't listen to what he says. He says, okay, do this. I say, I know better. And I think, finally, in the end, what he said, I'll come down, come back to. But in that process, I'll cause trouble to everybody around me. That's what Jonah did, no? Do you, do you understand? Yes? But we serve a talking God, yes? And He will talk to you just like He talks to me. And He will talk to me just like He talks to you. He's not partial, yes? With anybody. But He's looking for those who seek Him. Hallelujah. Yes? Go to Psalm 36, 9. It says, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Yes? So, salvation according to the scripture is the fountain of life. What is the fountain of life? It's the fountain of everlasting life. Yes? Who gives us everlasting life? Jesus does. Do you understand? Yes? It's the fullness of life. Who gives us the fullness of life? I have come that you may have life and life in the fullness. John 10, 10, yes? The source, he's the source of abundant life. And the Holy Spirit leads us to Jesus. Am I clear? Yes? So it is important that we bear fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life. Why? So other people can say, oh, he's a Christian? No. So that we can have a relationship with our Father in heaven. Remember, Daniel, in the book of Daniel, says knowledge will increase in the last day. 
knowing about god and things of god and spiritual things will not get you mature spiritually it means nothing actually it's your relationship with god that matters that makes a difference in your life when things are not the way they ought to be do you understand knowing god to understand i knew a thousand ways to get out of trouble i'm talking spiritual before i met jesus so including self hypnosis god of body experience whatever you call it yeah but none of this was real could give me true peace true joy and true happiness in the lord amen is that clear so come to christ yeah let's pray we do not want to end this message of hope and love without letting you know that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved